Hiya folks, Phil here. Excuse this weird angle. We're going to do some blending, as promised. So last week, we tasted all the component parts, other than the Cavendish and the Virginia, that's going to go into this sort of blend. Reason is I've tasted Virginia a thousand times. I know what it tastes like. It's nothing new on its own. The others were sort of new on their own. Uh, and Cavendish, well, people have asked me what, um, the reason for Cavendish is in the first place. Well, Cavendish is, is like a sponge, basically. It doesn't have a lot of flavour to it, and it's very good for holding a topping. We're not doing a topping for this particular um, episode. We will be doing that down the line. But what it does is um, it sort of pseudo-absorbs the flavours around it. So it will absorb the Kentucky, the Puri, the Burleys, the Virginia, and sort of mush them together in a way that you can't really do without a long period of aging, or perhaps compression, something like that. So that is the reason we're using it. It sort of helps meld it together. Um, been used for a long time, can be overused. It's certainly associated with gloopy aromatic blends, which we're not trying to make. I realize this lighting is probably not ideal, so please forgive me. I'm not smoking. Just recorded a review video a few minutes ago, and I wanted to get this one out of, sort of out of the way. Um, but actually, this one will be in two parts. Anyway, so what you will need is some sort of bowl for mixing, it's a plastic bowl do. Um, I've got this um, spray bottle, it's just plain, it's just full of water. If you want to use distilled water, that's fine. I don't bother, I use tap. Um, you need a scale with a reasonable high resolution. And I've got this little scale here, which is... Made in China, cost about ten pounds. It's got my sort of plastic thing resets. It's got very high resolution, so you can get down to a gram, um, get down to under a gram quite easily. So very suitable for what we're doing. And um, so what I've done while you were not here is come up with a first stab blend that we're going to do. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make this blend. And I'm going to tell you what the ingredients are. We're going to mix it together. We're going to weigh it together. We're going to bag it up in a plastic bag, like a Ziploc, and I'm going to try the first bowl in about 24 hours' time. What I'm going to do is just what I've done before, and I get that I got this um, idea from Glyn. Uh, if you remember GQ Tobaccos from years back, it used to be a fellow on there called uh, Glyn Quelch who um, did a really great series on blending sort of things. And one of the things he suggests you do at first is just make up like a micro batch and then shove it in your pocket, you know, keep it there so it's nice and warm and it's, you know, can have time to mix. So I'm going to do that. We're going to have the first sort of sample over the next few days. I only filmed the sort of first few samples. Uh, the, the, I'll only film my thoughts in 24 hours after the initial blend, and I'll have a sample of that, and then I'll keep trying it over the week, and if it's still pleasant enough, then we're going to go with that as the first one. If it's not, then I'll probably tweak it over the week, but I'll certainly be coming back to you with the um, final tweaks for me. Again, you might watch this and say, what? Why is he doing that? But this is a burly blend, so I like burly, and I like a lot of burly blends that are already out there. Do I need to come up with another one? No, but this is the fun part of this hobby, is that we can if we want to. So I want the majority of it to be normal burlies. Uh, I want um, to be a bit of Virginia and Perique in there to... Um, contrast what's going on so you can taste those flavors 
I don't want a topping, I don't want a casing in this one. I will do another variation with topping and casing. I'm just trying to get this up. Oh, I need to move that back. There you go. So, okay, so I'm just going to mix now. Um, so I'm going to start out with the white bird. Let me see if I can get better lighting. I'm, folks, I'm not known for my production values, so you really must. Um, this is the white burley, so we're going to go with eight grams of this. So I've kind of make I'm working towards a thirty gram sample here. So measurement is going to be ounces, no, no grams. I'm set up to grams, and I'm going to go for eight. So you, it really does help to have a scale that can. Get you to this sort of resolution. So I'm on nearly seven. What do you think? Oops, 7.2, 7.3. The reason I'm trying to be this precise is if I do come up with a miracle recipe. I don't want to have to think, oh, there's a pinch here and a dash there. Nearly at eight. Nearly at eight. Just thinking about it. Nearly at eight. Close enough. It's quite a lot of tobacco. Eight ounces. I mean, eight ounces. Eight grams of white burley. Now going in the bowl. So let's move on. It's got a great. I like modern scales. It got tear, so you can reset it. So that's the white burley out of the way. So this is going to be fifty percent. The blend is going to be between the white and the dark. Here's the dark. I'll sit down again so you can see my wonderful, beautiful face. You know you want. You know you want. Smells yummy already. <laughs> As I said, these scales are ever so cheap. Honestly, Amazon, £10. Even batteries were included. I remember when nothing had batteries included. 7.1, 7.4. You never know, and that 0.1 of a gram makes the difference between a, a loser of a blend or something I can sell to GLPs. Ooh, slightly over, let's just take it out. Eight on the nose. Right. The rest of this is going to be pretty simple. So we have eight and eight. Thank you for putting up with watching me do measurements. Go on. Anyone know any jokes? Tear. What did I say the next ingredient was going to be? Uh, face ID. Huh? Bright Virginia, right, so I decided to try Bright Virginia rather than Red. I realized I had some blending Virginia available. So we're going to go with 5 grams of this. So this is not a Virginia forward blend at all. This is Samuel Gaweth blending tobacco, which I'm sure you can't get over there across the pond. My American cousins, but you can get plenty of bright Virginia. I think at this quantity, it's not going to really matter if it's red or bright. It's just just there to offer some contrast. I've blended with this before. It's been fine. 
Don't know why I think it needed to be red. It might need to be red. This might just turn out to be a dog. Who knows? I'm nearly at 4. 4.2, 0 0.6, 0 0.9, 0 0.9, come on. Did you lose me that? 0.1. Here we go. Four point nine. Close enough. It's wiggling back and forth. Right. So that's to recap. Eight of brown. Eight of white. Five of Virginia. Now we're going to do five again of Kentucky. And then we're going to do five again of Cavendish, and then two of Perique. Oh, that smells good. That was that Kentucky, right? Let's reset the scale. This is really dry. So I will be hydrating this tobacco before it goes in the baggie. This weighs more, I can already see. Oh, I'm at five already. So that's actually quite a bit less in volume than the others. But in terms of weight, it's right. I don't know if we should go by volume. We should go by weight. This is an experiment that we're running together. Okay, that was Kentucky. Let's do the Cavendish. We're using brown Cavendish as opposed to black doesn't really matter. If it was black, I would have to ensure it was unsweetened. This again, this is really dry. This is almost crispy. It's all right. That's what water is for. Often you get blending tobacco is dry and it's down to the blender to add the appropriate moisture 4.85 and then finally the parique yep Rigby's off again he's a dog on a mission what are you my parique there you are. This is C&D's Perique. I do have some other Perique, but I'll, I'll just go with this one because I like the cut. The other one was a bit more thick ribbon cut. This one is... I only want two grams of this. I'm almost there. That's it. Two grams. Because you never know. This is going to be a strong blend anyway. Let's not make it overly strong. Okay, weighing boredom is over. Turn the scale off, get that out of the way. Crumbles out of the way. So, I don't know if you can see, what I've got in there. It's just a mess of tobacco, which I'm just now going to do is Go ahead and mix it quite thoroughly. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to moisten it. Mix it again. I'm not trying to be too rough with this because some of this is quite dry and I'm a bit worried it's going to go into dust. We don't want dust. But we do want a good mixture. It smells wonderful. Smells wonderful. The nice thing is it's all fairly um, uniform. That Parikh is really standing out. You see that? Mixture of white and bright and dark. A few 
thicker cuts of leaf in there that more than I'm thrilled with. The reason I wouldn't smoke it right now, you know, I'm just basically going to exclusively smoke this stuff over the next few days until we do this next video. Let's just try to figure out in my mind what's right and what's wrong. Okay, right, I think, I think that's quite amalgamated. Yeah. I think that's quite amalgamated now. It's quite a lot more tobacco than I thought the 30 gram sample would be. But because it's dry, it's got more volume. Okay, that's it. Now I'm just going to miss this about three times, give it a stir, three times, give it a stir. So about six, seven sort of squirts of the mist there. So it's just like, you know, it's on that mist sort of level. One, two, two, three. Excuse me a minute while I sort of mix. Just trying to get a bit of moisture in there. After all, it is very dry. It starts to cling to the sides, so, you know. Mix with your hands. It's up to you whether you think you need rubber gloves or anything like that. It's dry, you're not likely to get a lot of tobacco. Another three. One, two, three. And you kind of know when you've done enough. It starts to get a little bit trickier to work with. At that point, you want to stop. And as I say, we're going to get it into a baggie. I'm going to shove it into my pocket. Carry it around with me today, right? That's starting. I don't think we need much more water with this. It's clinging together a little bit, which is good. Clinging together means melding, which is what we want. We don't want. We want a symphony. We don't want a bunch of individuals trying to compete. This is not a competition. One, two. That's it. So what have I done? Six, eight sprays. It really depends on how moist it is. But right, it feels much more pliable now, which is great. Okay, I think we're done mixing. I think I've moistened it. We're going to get that into a plastic bag now, as best as I can. So you can work out the actual percentages yourself. This is just a starting point. And I haven't used a lot of the tobacco either, so um, we have plenty more time for experimentation. I won't film everything. I'll probably just recap. Um, but that's it. Okay, I'm just going to get that into a baggie, plastic Ziploc, shove it into my pocket, which I will do for the, the week. Um, over the week, I'll fine-tune and I'll tweak it and I'll chop something out, I'll add, I'll just change the ratios more than likely. I'm not going to add any new components to the blend. At the end of the five days, hopefully I've gotten to something I'm really happy with. And what we'll do then is we'll probably press some. If I'm happy with the blend as well, we'll make a casing and we'll try, not a casing, but a topping. And we'll try to top it for a sort of a sweeter variation. Just to show you folks how I think it could be done. I'm not saying my way is the best. Some of you are probably cringing in horror right now. But this is it. That's where we are. Okay? I'll see you guys tomorrow. But you'll still be part of the same video. So thanks again. Bye. Okay, folks. We're back again. I'm dropping stuff on the floor. 24 hours later, thereabouts, 24 hours later, and I have had a plastic baggie full of this tobacco, stuffed in my pocket, keeping warm, compressed, trying to sort of do a bit of melding of the flavours together. I haven't tried it yet. Um,
I got some drying out on the ground. So what do we smell in the bag here? It's pretty subtle, I have to say. Mostly the Kentucky and the Perique sort of creeping through. But nothing untoward at all. It was moister than I thought it would be. Those sprays, but I think for pressing or jarring, I think that's a good idea. You could just dry, air dry it yourself when you're ready. So we're just going to pack the clay and have just a taste test smoke to see how it is. And this is completely rotten right now, and I just hate it, which is unlikely. Um, we, I will stop this video and we will tweak the recipe here and now, but I think it'll be okay. So the plan will be I'm going to smoke it up Monday through Friday, then we'll come back again over the the weekend and think about some tweaks and some things like that. I might tweak it during the week if it's really bothering me, but I'm going to try to fairly smoke it exclusively just to sort of figure out if it's worth making a big batch at this point with the same mixture or doing something else. So this is my testing pipe. I haven't used it in a while. It's just for testing. Quite mild. There's a bit of a zinginess there, a bit sharp on the nose. So I can already tell this is not going to be the final blend. It's a bit mild. It's not very sweet. I certainly get the spice of the perique in the nose though. So that's making itself known. Kentucky, not so much. The tiniest hint of hay of the Virginia in the background. Just the tiniest. Pleasant, but it's yeah, it's mild. And that's how it goes with blending. You're never going to get it right in the first sort of shot. I might have been a little bit too careful with some of the condiments. I'm going to up the Kentucky and the Virginia. For sure. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. In fact, for that break. I was opening my nose up like horseradish or something like that. Whoa. I bet there's a lot of nicotine in this blend now. I 
I think I might have got the Perique levels right. I don't think I'm going to touch those. I think I will up the Kentucky. Make it at least on par with the um, the brown and the white. Maybe even more. Maybe even more. The Virginias are coming out now. Yeah. I'm not getting the nuttiness of Burley that a lot of people like, and I like too. I wonder if that's something to do with how they case it. The dark Burley seemed to give me a little bit of the nuttiness. Hmm. Much better now. <laughs> Even after a few puffs away. So I dried it out a while. I dried it out for half an hour or so. Now I'm not so sure I don't like it on its own. <laughs> Except for that. No, is it that parik? Maybe I've done right on that parik. Right. I can taste the Virginia. Can't taste that Kentucky. So the only thing I'd want to do is add some Kentucky to this. So what I'm going to do, not on video, I'm going to change this recipe and I'm going to add another three grams of Kentucky. I'm going to put it back in my bag and. I'll smoke that this week. And then next Saturday, I'll give you a quick sort of rundown of where I think the blend is, whether it's good enough for actually trying to press some of it. Smooth. Sweet enough, spicy, or like a little bit more of the smoky quality though, and some of that floral that might bring out some of those burlies. The burlies are there. They're a bit bland in this. Could be that Cavendish causing it. It's creamy. That's the Cavendish. I've had worse tobacco, to be honest. I've had worse tobacco, so I'm 85% pleased so far with it. I think if we did go for a little topping experiment, for those of you that like um, slightly aromatic blends, I think this would probably soak it up quite nicely. All right, folks, I think this is probably going long enough, so... Next episode, I'll talk about how this tastes with three more grams of perique in it. Um, see if I'm happy with it after smoking it all week. If I am, we will get it pressed into a, a puck. I like uh, Wolf Valley Boy and um, Northwest Pipe Smoker. have gone out and got one of these noodle presses. So... I'll do the rest of that as a small hockey puck. And then when I'm finally happy with this and I've perfected it after whatever, um, yeah, I'll make big batches. But now it's just experimental. Okay, folks? Hmm, there's the nuttiness now. Maybe this is, this is more near to a good blend than I thought. I didn't like the first couple of puffs, I have to admit. And this could be maybe a touch drier. Pleasant enough to smoke as it is, though.
Not a bad blend. Looking good. Nearly there. All right, folks. Take care. See you Friday for car chat, and see you Saturday for blending part three. Bye.